So why do we have time zones? The answer to this question obviously must have a relationship with transportation for me to discuss it. And in short, we owe time zones to railroad transportation. Until the industrial age and spurred by travel, the time of day was a local matter. Every town set its official clock if it had one according to the local position of the sun. This served sufficiently until the introduction of the steam engine and rail travel, which made it possible to travel fast enough over long distances to require almost constant resetting of timepieces as a train progressed in its daily run through multiple cities. Going to the east or the west, actual solar time can change by one minute every 12 and a half miles. So the sun time could differ between cities and can even differ between sides of a large city. A complex set of timetables was necessary to travel by train and could result in major collisions because of mistakes in timekeeping. At this time, most trains were operated on a single track with sidings provided at intervals to allow for trains going in opposite directions or at different speeds to pass each other. Safe operation and success of the growing railroads depended on keeping time more consistently and precisely. Timetable operation required that all moving trains use a standardized time. A timetable is a published schedule of the movement of trains, which lists the trains, locations along the line, and times at which certain events, such as arrivals and departures at a station or siding, were expected to take place. Using a timetable system, trains could only operate along a section of track in prearranged time periods. When trains were moving in opposite directions or at different speeds on a single track railroad, meetings are scheduled where one train must pull into that siding and wait so the other cars can pass. Railroad time was first introduced on the Great Western Rail Railway in England in 1840, when a number of different local times were synchronized and a single standard time was applied. This shows one of the earliest maps of the United States to show the standard time zones. William F. Allen was the General Time Convention Secretary and argued that North American railroads should adopt a five-zone standard similar to the one that's in use today. And on October 11, 1883, the heads of the major railroads met in Chicago at the Grand Pacific Hotel and agreed to adopt Allen's proposed system. The new standard time system was implemented on Sunday, November 18, 1883, and newspapers referred to that day as the day of two noons. At 12 o'clock noon, each railroad station clock was reset as the standard time noon was reached within each time zone. There was no legislative enactment or ruling. The railroads just adopted a time zone system encompassing North America and assumed the public would follow. Most people did accept this new time, but a number of cities and counties re refused to accept the new railroad time, which after all was not law. Standard time did remain a local matter until March 1918 when it was made law as part of the introduction of daylight saving.